Welcome to my next guide for the Nexus on Lasso difficulty. And without any further interruption, let's go. So we're going to be starting off by progressing through the level like normal, and we're going to be following the same theme of what we did in the previous mission, where we're mostly just going to be using our sword and we're going to be using our invisibility to be dashing through. So as you can see in this first room, we're just ignoring most of the enemies. And just if you want to, you can kill any of them or all of them. Doesn't really matter. There's only going to be a couple sections where you're going to need to kill all of the enemies. Now in order to help out in running past enemies, you can see I'm throwing dynamos in order to stun enemies that might cause a problem, such as the elites, as if they do happen to see you, they tend to have heat waves or they might pull out a sword, and they can cause some serious damage to you that way. So anytime that you need to either kill anyone or run past anyone and you might need a little bit more assistance in running past, you can always just use your dynamos to do it that way. Now once you approach this next room here, we're going to be killing these two brutes that are in the doorway as they tend to block the area a little bit more. And at the end of the room, there's going to be a brute and a grunt, and then there's going to be a lot more grunts inside the door. And we're going to want to make sure that we distract and kill them as much as we can, as those grunts in particular love to go suicidal and they'll pull out the double grenades. And the moment you go next to them, whether you're invisible or not, they will explode and instantly kill you. So we want to just make sure that we run past, give ourselves enough time that they won't just instantly detonate themselves and kill them that way. Next we're going to be moving on to the main hallway as we turn left. We'll just keep progressing through the level like normal. Just melee if you need any shields. And then just keep running through. So in this next room, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to keep doing the same thing. We're going to run past, but once you pass through the doorway here, there's going to be a couple of elites and grunts that you'll... Have to be a little more, more careful of, as you can run through them if you need to. However, I had a little bit more trouble doing so myself, as the elites will have a tendency to pull out a sword as you get closer to them. And there will be one blue rank elite that will always have a sword out, and he'll be active camo. And he just kept messing with me. And it was pretty difficult to run past. So when we go in here, there's going to be two jackals and two elites we're going to have to worry about. One red, yellow shield and one blue shield. And we're just going to be doing our standard thing where we run in with our camo, try to sword someone as much as we can, kill them off that way, regain our shields in the process, and keep keep going. You can see I'm throwing my dynamos at it, especially the blue elite, they tend to get stunned pretty quickly, so you can just keep spamming them with dynamos and you won't have to worry about them breaking free as often as other enemies would. But just like the rest of the level, just keep running through as much as possible, and it won't be until we get to this room here that we're gonna have to actually kill out the entire room. And see, I didn't quite realize that. I kind of forgot that this room was the one where we had to kill everything until I got to the console itself. But we're going to be doing the exact same thing we just did in that previous room, where we just dash, zip around, use guerrilla tactics, and just keep sorting everyone you possibly can. Feel free to use these explosive crates here, as they'll generally one-shot any enemy you hit them with, with exceptions of shielded brutes and elites. But even then, one more sword strike after that will finish him off. Not much else really to be said about this. The only real other tip I can give you when it comes to clearing out rooms with these is try to go behind cover when possible when you're dealing with a lot of enemies in front of you. As once you start attacking, you will be visible to them until you leave their line of sight for... A certain amount of time. Like I said in the previous video, I think it's about two seconds, generally the average that I, do, I use. They just go behind cover, that way they lose track of you, and then when you reappear, they generally won't see you again, and you'll be able to get the first strike, get your shields back, and be able to more effectively handle any other groups that you may need to. One more thing just with this type of strategy here is it also is uh, pretty common that you might miss an enemy here and there as we zip around back and forth throughout the entire room. So just make sure, double check that you got everything. In this case it, it'll tell you if you haven't killed everything yet by when you go to the console it'll tell you to kill more. But if you haven't, just go find some more. They'll usually just be someone hiding behind a box or some other kind of cover.
Now in this room, after you kill that first pack mule grunt, what we're going to be dealing with is two hunters. And we're going to be using the same type of strategy we did in the previous mission, the sequence, where our goal is to break the armor that covers the weak spot of the hunters and then go in and try to get a sword into their, into their weak spot. Now, you don't necessarily have to use a rocket launcher. You could just use a sword the entire time, as the sword will also break their armor. But I like to just generally use the rocket launcher, but I found it more easy in this section here just to use the sword, as there's less things to accidentally hit my rocket on, and it's just didn't want to shoot myself with how enclosed the room is that I'll just take extra damage by hitting myself repeatedly. So didn't want to bother risking that, so I just went around and just sorted these hunters the entire time. And again, it's just going to be exactly like we did in the sequence where we just dash circles around this room until they lose track of us, at which point we go behind them, hit them in the back once or twice, you can usually get two or three hits off per time that you're able to hit each hunter, as they get stunned a little bit when you hit them in their weak spot before they eventually will turn around to do a melee strike on you. So you can see I was able to do two more hits like that, and then you back off. And you rinse and repeat this entire cycle over and over again until you can eventually clear them both out. Now just like before, when you melee or when you kill one of the hunters, the other one will go in rage. And they'll generally turn around and be a lot more alert more often. So you just want to be extra careful and be a little bit quicker when you go in and try to attack the next hunter that's just by himself. As he will generally find you quicker and you have less time to react. So... Said, once you manage to get behind him, try and hit him again. Remember, every time they hit him, your shield will recharge. So every time you go in to engage, you should be going in with full shields. And see, this last hunter is taking a little bit longer to get behind than before. Like I said, he's a lot more alert. He's a lot more jumpy. And he's able to find out where I am a lot quicker. So, But eventually, we were able to do the exact same thing. Manage to kill him off. Go into the console. Activate the drop and you'll be able to drop down the elevator shaft thing, whatever this is, the little Halo 2 reference, and progress through the level like normal. As you progress on this section, this section is actually really easy. It's just a big time sink that you're going to have to deal with. As normally when you're fighting through this mission on any other difficulty that's not lasso or anything else, you'll have to fight your way through the waves of sen sentinels. However, using the strategy with the active camo consistent, you don't have to fight any of them. You just have to wait for the gondola to travel the distance you need to and you'll be good. So you're going to tuck yourself in this corner and just every couple seconds use your active camo until the end. Just make sure active camo doesn't drop off and you'll be fine. Now once we eventually make it to the end, you're just going to get off, go off to the bridge and progress to the level like normal after successfully not having to fight with any of the sentinels. It's pretty nice. Now this section you're just going to have to grapple across or wait for the shield to come back in. Pretty easy to grapple across. You can just jump off and grapple to the opposite wall and you'll be just fine that way. Now this is going to be one of the more difficult sections in this mission, especially with our loadout, but we're going to be ta taking advantage of the drop wall that we have here. So this first room that you go into is actually super easy. You just go in, grab the core or the power cell, and dash back out. The sentinels should not see you at all, and if, even if they do, it's not a big deal if they hit you once or twice as you're going to be able to get your shields back in the next door pretty easily. So once you plug in the power cell, we'll go into the next room. And the next room, we're going to have to make sure that we kill all the sentinels, as this is the difficult one of all of them. So we're just going to go to the left, use the sword, kill that sentinel, and then turn, immediately turn right and kill the other one. And we're going to do the exact same thing in this next room here. We're going to kill the sentinel on the left, and then kill the sentinel on the right. Now for this main section here where the power cell is that we're going to have to grab, we're going to want a shock rifle, and you can either grab them back here with the armor crate here, or you can just pick them off the dead body of the ones that we've already killed. You want to trade in your rocket launcher for the power cell for right now. 
Or not the rocket launcher. You want to trade your sword in. My bad. You want to trade in your sword for the shock rifle, and you're going to try and pick off some of the sentinels that you can here. There will be two available right now that you can kill, and more will be showing up later as you start to cross the bridge. The use of your dynamo grenades is actually pretty crucial here. Uh, you can do it without using them too much, but I found it very helpful as it will stun them and do quite a bit of damage to them, surprisingly. And you don't really see me using the dynamo grenades here as often in this first section. I end up using them a little bit more. I just kind of forgot I had them for a little bit and just while playing. It's like, oh yeah, that's right, I need to use my dynamos. And see, I'm starting to remember I have to do that again. But we're just going to make sure we kill off these two. And then once we finish off these two, we're actually just going to run across the bridge, activate the rest of them, and then run back here. Don't worry about if your shields break. You shouldn't be having as much trouble with the next set of sentinels once we get to it, and I'll show you why. So after you took care of those two, you just go a little bit like halfway across the bridge or so, and then immediately turn back. You do not want to go all the way across, as once you grab the power cell, the bridge will deactivate, and then you're going to have to leave your active camo in order to progress through like normal. So just make sure you always have that drop shield here. You can see I accidentally grabbed the uh, shock rifle with my rocket launcher instead. But this is why we're using the rocket launcher is because as you get closer to the door and the sentinels know that you're there, they tend to love to just group up right next to the door. So you can just use your rocket launcher and just keep on chugging along, taking out multiple at a time, and you don't really have to worry about them. You can use the dynamos to keep them steady for a little bit, or you can just keep spamming dynamos as they do a lot of damage to sentinels. You won't have to worry about it. Now for this, once you just cross the bridge, you'll grab the power cell, and note that the bridge will disappear. And you can see I kind of misjudged my spacing here, so I had to think quick, throw the power cell, and switch to my grappling hook in order to save myself. But rest assured, you can safely throw the power cell from one end of the bridge to the other, and then just safely grapple your way across, and you won't have to worry about almost falling to your death like I did. A little over-eager on my part. Now this next section is going to be just as easy as the first one. However, I wanted to get my shields back, so I meleeed a couple of them. Uh, but note that you don't have to. You can just, just like the first door, grab your power cell and instantly just run out again. But like I said, I wanted my shields back, and I was a little greedy, shield-hungry, so... Feel free to just skip this if you want. Like I said, I'm just getting my shields back. I'm just going to be killing a couple of them. Only really do this if you are really low on shields and you really need them pretty badly. As this is the pretty much the end of the level. And once you start meleeing some of them, the other one will come by. And you can see I'm getting shot at a couple times here. So I ended up losing some of my shield again. But at least I got it back the first time so I was able to take those hits. And once you plug in that final one, you're actually going to be done with this mission, and you're done with the Nexus. Next mission will be the Command Spire, and I can't wait to see you there. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you found this helpful, feel free to check out my previous lasso guides, and stay tuned for the next update for the Command Spire. And as always, I'd appreciate any kind of feedback you can give on how I might be able to improve my guides to further help you guys along with any of your lasso or other achievement needs. And until next time, see ya!